All right, guys, welcome back to Survival Living here. Yes, I'm making coffee. So, U.S. warship was um, attacked in the Red Sea. Yeah, I mean, who could have seen that coming? So, as you guys can see, there's some pop-ups here for you. Um, yeah, the Houthis. I mean, pretty obvious. Even though the DOD is not saying it was the Houthis that actually attacked the Yemen-backed terrorist group, well, they call themselves the Houthi rebels, are making claim to this. Uh, they actually attacked commercial ships in the Red Sea, and U.S. warship went to aid and fell under attack as well from missiles and rockets. Yeah. So, fortunately, uh, U.S. ship was not hit, and there were no lives or injuries as far as U.S. soldiers, naval. So, that's good. That's good news. The bad news is, this is a major escalation in this whole Israeli war. All right. You know, we discussed this before that I believe it's going to be a precursor to something much major. And yeah, it will be. Uh, here in the state side, guys, we keep on seeing the news about everything with the Middle East, Israel. And people here in the states go, well, it's happened over there. I'm not concerned about it. Unfortunately, with this particular type of war, there is a huge religious aspect to it. Yeah. You have people that believe a certain way. And unfortunately, the United States is a melting pot of the world. Pretty much. We have all range of cultures, all range of race, religion, all right here. And as you guys may have been paying attention to the news of all the pro Palestine protests and stuff, anti-Israel protests that has sparked off here in the country, has sparked off across the globe. Actually, it's, it's everywhere. This is a major escalation. And to think that nothing's going to happen here in the States, well, it might not be the Houthis themselves, but the civilian population, the radicalism of religion, thought process, culture, yeah, that can happen here. I mean, we have seen where our power grid's been attacked. And what was that, last year? We did uh, videos on that. Where people just started shooting at substations, taking out grids. You know, we did st stories on that you know, when we first started the channel, how easy it was to take out power. And, of course, I read all the comments, don't give people ideas. Uh, it's not giving anybody ideas, common knowledge, you can look at it. Uh, usually there might be a chain link fence around these places, there's no security, all right? It's just open. It's not giving people ideas, it's as preppers we're seeing the threats. My job is to acknowledge these threats, let you guys know about these threats, so that you guys can make an informed decision on your preparedness level, and actually look at how dangerous this stuff is. I mean, we actually covered the sleeper cells here in America. Guess what? We got sleeper cells. When we discuss power grid, power grid failure in areas because substations get shot up. Because I first heard about it, it was in California. It was the very first one that I was studying up on. And look at that. More and more. That's why we push having supplies. Let me go ahead and get into the story. All right, so again... Headline, ship face Houthi claim attack in Red Sea as officials say U.S. warship also fires in self-defense. The Pentagon said it would provide more information as it becomes available. And here's a picture of southern Red Sea. Commercial ships came under attack Sunday by drones and missiles in the Red Sea. And the U.S. warship there opened fire in self-defense as part of a hours-long assault claimed by Yemen Houthi rebels, officials said. Coffee. The Pentagon said it was aware of reports regarding the warship, the USS Kearney, and other ships that would provide information as it became available. So this stuff still, what, within a couple hours ago. The U.S. Kearney is a guided missile destroyer that already shot down multiple rockets the Houthis have fired towards Israel so far in the war. It wasn't damaged in the attack and no injuries were reported on board. 
The Kearney responded after hearing from the Bahamas flagship bulk carrier Unity Explorer that it was under attack by missile fire. The official said the Kearney shot down two drones during the attack, one in self-defense and the other after checking on the Unity Explorer, the official said. Assessments are still being made to the Unity Explorer. The British military earlier said that there had been a suspected drone attack and explosion in the Red Sea without elaborating. So, guys and gals, like I said, I got something flying in my face. Uh, I get people all the time, well, that's over there. We're not worried about it. Yeah, I'm not expecting any rocket and missile strikes from the Houthis here in American soil. My big concern is what I'm seeing as far as the protests. And you know how protests go here in this country. And, uh, they turn violent, okay? Don't believe me? Whatever. You know, I'm just trying to get you prepared as much as possible. That's my concern is the radicalism of this whole thing the debate between pro-palestine anti-israel right here on our streets in our soil in our cities be prepared most of these protests are happening in larger cities if you live in a larger city try to avoid those areas as much as possible in case the city was to get locked down or something major as far as explosions were to happen because somebody has brought in something to that area to cause an issue have uh, supplies on hand have a evacuation point ready a lot of people don't like me saying bug out all right if somebody was if you live in the city all right I'm not talking about running to the woods bugging out is leaving your current situation and going to a better situation a better area that you have stocked up you have multiple routes of getting to doesn't mean you just run into the woods all right you might have to cut through the woods you might have to travel days to the woods to get to that location because all the roads are down, but that's why we teach outdoor survival. But here's a, a scenario for you. Dirty bomb. That can actually be walked in. Yeah. It could be driven in by a vehicle. Detonates in your area. But you absolutely refuse to bug out from that area. Well, you're not going to last long in your home. Now, granted, if you have protective equipment as far as like mirror safety, gas masks, the whole nine yards, yeah, you, you could have last longer. But do you really want to be sitting there in an area that has dirty bombs going off? No, no, I don't. That's why I was talking about having a backup plan, having a way out, which is called a bug out plan. No one wants to hear it. I don't know why it's called being prepared. You also need to be utilizing those routes, learning them, learning the terrain. Make sure that your next stop has a supply cache, have food there, defensive tools, whatever it is that you need, water filtration, water stored up. I've discussed this before, even if you just have a friend that is also like-minded and you know that you can go to, your stuff is protected there. If it's only 20 miles away, it's still better than being in the epicenter of something like that. Those are my thoughts. Anyway, guys, I do believe this is going to escalate even more. Now, we've had them try to launch missiles and stuff like that at our warships before. The last round was like, it landed 10 miles off, you know, so there was no major threat. But 10 miles for a missile launch can make up those 10 miles pretty quick, an actual missile launch. So, they're just going to keep on until they hit us. And then we'll see what happens as far as our involvement in the war. Is it going to be more and more? Is it going to be another Afghanistan? Is, is this going to escalate into that? I believe so. War is money. Always has been. Always will be. War is fought over resources. Yeah. All right, guys. Please keep on prepping. Happy December. I know the holidays are coming up again. Um spend time with family as much as possible you know we've actually discussed and i've actually shown where we work with family members and stuff that weren't preppers and make them kits and stuff something that they could put underneath their bed you know put in a closet somewhere at least you know that family member has supplies until you can get to their location if something major happens and it doesn't have to be war a natural disaster alone major hurricanes tornadoes all this stuff happens earthquakes Something to think about, guys.
All right. I'll speak to you later.